Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Odyssey of Fire concept art. We're picking up where we left off. Last time we had these characters here. They were the malnourished people from the northern Shimbia. So now we're moving on to the next bit. This here is a little map that I did, like kind of a quick sketch just to get a general layout while I was writing the scene in the book. Here you can see tables and booths and here's a single washroom, you know, like a bathroom. There's a kitchen back here, there's a bar, more tables. Back here is like, it's an inn, so a few rooms that people can rent. Then there's this stripper type stage, so like it has exotic dancers on there. They've got like their own dressing room in the back. Yeah, this is a place that Suey and George go to sometime in the midway point of the book. Here we have a picture of Drask, who owns this bar that they go to. He wears like big frilly hat. Usually has a feather in it, but I didn't draw the feather, but he's an old man. Interesting guy. Another picture of Drask, and there's a better picture of his hat. The man who craves power. That's his name, Drask. Drask Porchel. There's an older picture of Drask. Uh, I was gonna make him look a lot older, but I don't wanna make him look extremely old. I want him to have some hair. This is a pretty cool picture. This is a picture of what we call a Jarkation, and they're basically like a dragon-like people. And they have like scales and really tough scale armor, like skin, and they have big wings, and usually they have like really crazy hairstyles. This is Aliseki, and she she shows up in the halfway point of the book, where Sui has to save her. She's actually a slave, and Sui goes into an arena to try to win her freedom. Here's a picture of Bradel. Uh, the reason why gnomes have cone-shaped hats is because they have heads like this. <laughs> Here's a picture of Sui. Uh, don't ask why her hair is blonde. You'll have to read the book to find out. Or see the show. But anyways, there's this guy named Bradle again. He's got the long head, and this is his sword. It's like a kind of like an ice pick type weapon. This is a creature. It's called a plantoid, like a humanoid plant, and they're pretty creepy. Like look at their faces. This is a character that appears in there, but he's not an elf. Like, this is before I came up with the concept of Alateki. There's Bradle again. Bradle's pretty cool. He's, he's kind of like a comic relief character, but he's he's got his serious moments too. But he's really funny, and he's really agile, and he can jump off on top of enemies. So here's uh, LaRue's airship. He flies Sui and George all the way over to the, the, this city of Zizek. Here's a picture of LaRue. He's a pretty cool guy. He's got kind of like a French accent. Yeah, he's neat. He's, he's, he's a doctor, but he also knows magic. Some more concept art of LaRue's ship. His airship. It's got a big cannon on the top, and it's got a turret in the back. Yeah, I really like his ship. It's called Veronica. The Veronica. Here's a, a picture of a flathead, is what I call it. They're a pretty huge, like, giant-like creature with, like, a, a head that just looks like a disc. They, they see through the sides of the disc. They have, like, kind of like infrared vision. Here's some, uh, an assortment of different races that I came up with. Uh, these guys are hev rays. They're pretty much human except for the fact that instead of hair they have feathers that come out of their head and and you know on their body you know the, instead of body hair they have they have body feathers but it's like the same way that humans have hair it's like very little fluffy feathers but on their heads they can grow like big long manes of feathers yeah they're pretty cool then there's the ramutau and they're like an insect-like creature. They talk through like a series of clicks and, 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 and out of their two mouths that they have there, you see. They have like two little mouths and four eyes. And they're pretty cool. The Dugos, they're like amphibious creatures. They have like hunchbacks and really uh, big stubby legs and they're 
They're kind of like slow creatures, kind of like a turtle. They're like very turtle-like. They don't have a shell, but they just have like a big tough back and they're very slow. Then there's the Khoisnar and they're like a dolphin-like people, believe it or not. Like they look like they have this big beak, uh, but they're really, they share a lot of DNA with dolphins and they have the big heads um, really long beaks, but the beaks are really light. So yeah, it looks like their head, head would be extremely heavy, but their beaks are actually really light. Here we've got a limzard, and they're like a really tall, gaunt humanoid with a long tail, and they're pretty cool. They're kind of psychic in a way. They can read minds. Yeah, they're interesting. This guy is originally, he was originally going to be like a, another, a disguised version of the main villain. But I decided I'm probably just going to have him be a character that shows up in Zizek to help Suey and George. I don't know what his name is going to be yet. There's like a turtle-like race. They're interesting. They've got these long little tendrils coming out of the side of their mouth. Here's Fenya, Fenya Toklo. She's like Nakomo and she has a dagger. She also has like a slingshot that she uses for certain like distracting enemies. But her her most notable weapon is a sniper rifle. It's kind of like a transformer in a way where she can like manipulate it and turn it into a pistol, like a handgun. And it's and it, you know, like compacted and everything into a handgun. So she can put it on her hip and take it out and extend it into a sniper rifle when she needs to. Here is a type of robot that serves people in the city of Zizek. It's at a bar. It kind of walks on the bar and it's made of this like this like silicone type material. It's kind of see-through in a way. It's, it's a very weird material that I kind of made up. I don't know if there's anything that really exists. It's not like silicone, it's like a it's like a gelatinous type material. That's what its body is made up of, and it has like a robotic arm, and it holds a beer mug and gives it to the person, and the eye has a sensor in it, it has the ability to smile and be friendly and talk. Yeah, it's kind of like a bartender, but it sits on the bar and walks across the bar and gives you drinks. Here's another character that shows up in Zizek. He's a pretty interesting guy. Um, I think he's just like a background character. He's nothing really important to the story. It's just like a guy you'd see in the background. Here's like another race of creature. They're kind of bird-like. I like to think of them as like a mix between a bird, a crab, and a, an ape. They got really big legs. This is a really weird creature. So yeah, it's got, as you can see, it's got two torsos, right? But there's like a face in the top torso. And this here is like a vocal thing that, that connects to its mouth. And it, it rattles when it talks. And it's supposed to amplify its voice because coming from this torso has a really big voice box. And it's like the head what of what would be like a human head is just an eye in the whole middle of it and it's got four arms and like uh, six legs because there's one in the back that you can't see. Interesting guy, really weird. And he's got gills too because he can swim underwater and breathe but he's got lungs down here. This is a creature, I forget the name of it but they're really horrifying monsters. As you can see he's got really huge horns, he's got like a stinger for a tail with like three blades really big jaws that can like, that are way more powerful than that of a crocodile even. And these tendrils that come up out of its body. Really strange creature and six legs. This is kind of like a Ramutal creature. A little bit different, different shaped head and more insect-like. This is a creature called a DeLorean. They're kind of dolphin-like in a way too. Kind of like reptilian. And yeah, they're peaceful creatures usually, but if they need to fight, they're pretty agile. It's kind of like a lemur. This is a statue that is on the planet of Solidia. It was originally gonna be in a place near the, the jungle, or I mean the forest of Matashimbib, but I decided it would be a 
pretty interesting place in uh, Talamont. This is Talamont at the top of the mountain. There's a pathway all the way down, although the mountain's a lot more complex than this. This is kind of like an unofficial map, and at the bottom is the Nilt Den, where Sui and George have to get to for some reason that I don't want to spoil. Here we have some animals. This is like a dragon-like chicken creature. And this is a, uh, a goat-like creature. It's kind of like a mix between a goat and a dog. So they're kind of cute. Here's a picture of Sui saying the quote, What good are we made for? And that's like going to be an important quote in Odyssey of Fire. And I think we're running out of time on the camera, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. And I'll leave you with this picture of Abaka, otherwise known as Greenbeard. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment, hit the bell, all that good stuff. Support our Patreon, and have a good day.